Hello, it's me. Thunar, double trouble. Let's just continue where we left off in the last video. I told you that I wanted to create... Um, now, when I execute uh, Thunar launch FM, you know, the, the script we had, it uh, spawns Thunar in our uh, D container here with the rules we set up in the last video. We have uh, our i3 config here and we can see this is what happens. And I can execute this with super E and it activates Thunar here. Great, nice. Okay, in this video we want to, to, to be able to spawn two different Thunar windows, uh, controlling them with two different hotkeys and have, having them uh, uh, making rules to, to, to make them tiled in, in two different containers. And this is actually a lot more uh, difficult and complicated to do than it might first seem. Uh, but it is logical why it is like, like it is, whatever. Launch FM. This is our script, you know. The thing is that when, when we execute Thunar with or without i3 run here, it, it always have this class name and instance name. So it's really hard to uh, this, uh, create rules and hotkeys for, for two windows uh, that are of the same uh, application. Uh, but but there is like a, a, a good old dirt hack known for forever that you can rename the class name and the instance name of, of an application and then uh, it, it gets more much more easy to manage uh, multiple instances of the same application. And X2 tool is a great uh, program that everyone should have that you can do this with. But the syntax for it, and especially, it, it, it can get really tricky to do this with, with some, some windows, but it's, you can do it. And some windows really don't like when you rename the instance name, and some, some windows, whatever. But with Thunar, it's totally no problem at all to, to rename these, these two, so we will do that now. Uh, but as I said, even, even if it worked with X2 tool and everything, I have actually added this to i3 run uh, a little wrapper for uh, for this x2 tool function. So you can use the rename option with i3 run. So we can specify it here uh, on, on this command line so we can very easily rename our instance. So let's say we want to uh, rename this uh, Thunar to Thunar D for instance, as the D container, and then we create one, one uh, command for Thunar B here, for the B container. So then we want the class name to be Thunar D here. And now, uh, if I execute i3 run, it will search for a window with the class name Thunar D. If it doesn't find that, it will execute the command Thunar. Uh, and it will not find Thunar D because there exists no uh, window called Thunar D. So this will happen now launch fm boom it created uh, it executed thunar because it didn't find thunar d but now uh, this i3 run gets stuck in a loop here because it's waiting for a window uh, matching the, the the class name it times out after 10 10 seconds here and we can see hmm, i didn't find anything well, well, what's this you know so we need to add the rename option rename rename and the argument to rename is the the if we are searching for a class name then the the argument to rename should also be a class name but the the real name that is uh, uh, of the window that we are creating so so rename here will be thunar uh, th this will even even if I created this wrapper, it will get uh, a bit hairy here soon. You will see, and I will do this right now to make it more readable and manageable. I I, I like you. I like to do this. Long options, one option on each line. That's nice. That's that's good. Good practice. So now uh, this should work. Now it will. Uh, um, we can close our tuners here. And now if I execute this. It will not find uh, Thunar D, so it executes the command and then it uh, waits till it finds a window matching uh, our rename option here, Thunar, and then it renames that window to Thunar D. We can see that with, uh, for instance, 
WMCTRL, which is a good uh, little program to, to, to see things like this. Here we can see that we have a, a, a window with the instance name Thunar and the class name Thunar D, so it worked. But uh, as you can see, it it, um, uh, it, it, it it put it here in our D container, which is what we like. But if we look into our i3 config, we can see that the, the criteria is just Thunar. It is not Thunar D, but it still put, put it here because this actually matches Thunar D. So if we would change this to uh, just to show you here to Thunar B instead, that will not match Thunar D. And then I can reload and then let's exit this. Now, if we do launch FM, launch FM, it sounds like a, a great uh, radio uh, channel. Maybe it is. Now it created Thunar D here again for us, but it didn't put it in the D container because the D container wants a window with a yeah B. This was a bit stupid example, but whatever. So let's now create our two rules here. One uh, look for Thunar D, the other one we look for uh, Thunar B. So we, I will change that rule to move that window to, to the B container. I will close this window again, and now if we do launch FM, it should put that window uh, in the D container. It didn't work. Ah, I didn't reload i3, sorry. There, launch FM, boom, in the D container. Okay, good. Now we want to create, uh, uh, make our, our, our launch FM here a bit more flexible, so to speak. So, so we can share. And the only thing we, we need to change here is, is this uh, character here from, from D to B. Um, I don't know. Let, let, let's do a simple get dots here. I, I, I don't know. There are different ways to do this, but let's, let's do this while get dots. Uh, colon C colon C for container then option do uh, case option in C closing parenthesis echo optarg chom esac done there and also close each case uh, statement with a double semicolon you know very inconsistent typical bash syntax everyone loves it uh, let's comment out this i3 run for a while here now while we test our uh, container option so what we have done now is is this if i execute launch fm now nothing happens because now it only uh, do this but if we would uh, use the command line option here and do uh, Argus, it echo Argus because Argus is the argument to the C option here. And we, we, we can access the argument to the C option by using the optarg here in our case statement that is executed by uh, looping get opts here. Uh, I have to add a colon after the C here. The first colon, it's just just use that. Otherwise, you will get errors when you execute a script with get opts, and then then you have to specify a, a, a command line option. This means that uh, that it's optional to have options. Whatever. I think that's what it is. What well, it doesn't matter. Colon C colon that, that will make this work. And uh, this colon means that uh, this option uh, takes an argument. It's not a flag. It's not so. You, so if we would just do this, I don't know if we get an error. Whatever. Uh, but that, uh, now we get nothing because we don't have an optarg here. <coughs> option here. That is a variable name that we will store uh, each uh, option that get opts find here. And then we do a loop while loop here and the while loop it, it continues for as long as there are uh, command line options in this get opts. 
and then we do a case to compare the option that we currently are viewing or using with getops here i know it gets really tricky with all these option things but uh, maybe it, it's more clear if I, if i show you that you can rename this to anything and then case here can also be anything so this, this is a variable name that, that, that you can change. And if anything is C, which is the current option then, then we will uh, do this thing. And what we do here is echo optarg. And optarg is a built-in variable that exists in, when you use getopts, which contains the argument passed to that option, the current option. So if we would have uh, more options here, uh, like D beta there it prints Argus because that's the C option and if we would add like D here and print the argument for that what will happen now nothing because we are not looking for a D option we have to specify that we also are looking for a D option here in our get uh, uh, string here this is a special string that you pass into the get opts command so now what happens now now we just get an empty line here uh, that is because we don't have the colon after d now now it just uh, uh, interpret d as a flag more or less so so it will not uh, uh, put the the argument here in in the optarg variable so that's the and i hope that's clear now how how get ops work here now if we add the colon now it should print both our arguments um yeah that, that's just a short introduction to to get ops but i but i thought let's just bake that into this video uh, uh and later in the series i i want to show you how to use how to add long options with i'm which i'm using now with all my scripts as you can see here with i3 run and stuff but that's a completely different story and even a different get opts doesn't support long options you have uh, i use get opt, which is a different command but let's not do that now now we at least have the fundamentals here for get ops. And all we all we want to do here is, is to be able to specify a target container for uh, for our file manager that we are spawning here. And um, okay, okay. Instead of echoing uh, this, we, we can remove this D stuff also because we're only interested in C here you see and then instead of echoing this we, we put optarg in a variable instead let's call it target container is equal to optarg now if we run this nothing happens of course but we will have an, uh, uh, a variable that we can access here that's called target container um, echo Target container. So now it should also echo Argus. But Argus is, of course, a stupid uh, 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 option that we really don't want. We don't want to spawn this in the Argus container because that doesn't exist. We want to spawn it, spawn the, the, the Windows now in either B container or A uh, or the D container. And I'm thinking that D container here, that can be the default. Uh, uh, default container so if the only only valid um, uh, optarg or argument to see that we care about is actually b if it isn't b we will send it to the d container but if it is specifically b then we send it to the b container so we can just do a simple test here uh, target container is equal to or we do not equal to B then target container is equal to D so now if we execute this with the same the Argus command here it echo D because target container is not B we can remove this and we can test here with A it's D C it's D B now we get a B but what if we would pass in a lowercase B 
we still uh, that that is not valid. That doesn't uh, match this. And I, I I think we should should make it case insensitive. And one one thing you can do to do that is I think I think uh, I have to demo this also really quickly here. Uh, let's do a var one uh, is equal to hello, and then echo var one. Okay, now if we do launch FM, it will echo var one here. Hello. You can add some some cool little tricks here to to uh, bash. One is to add a, a caret here uh, uh, after the variable that will capitalize the first uh, uh, character of the string. If you add two carrots, then it will capitalize the whole wor word. And you can also uh, if we change the case of some of them here, you can do the opposite. And uh, let's do this also. With a comma, then it will uh, lowercase the first character of the string, if you ever need to do that. Or two commas, and it will uh, print the whole, string, whole, whole contents of var1 here as lowercase. So if we want to compare here that target container uh, is not equal to B, uh, capital B, then uh, use D. I think the best thing to do here is to, to add this conversion uh, here. So target container is equal to uppercase uh, optarg. And now lowercase b should work and we should get a b no matter if it's uppercase or lowercase, but D doesn't work and that. Good, 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 good. And now, <laughs> after that long, stupid thing here, we can add, instead of hard coding uh, D here, we, we just add target container. And then we should put this in quote. It's always good to quote things when you're using variables like this. But the variable can never be anything other than capital B or capital D. So now um, if we execute this again with launchfm cd here, I think that will only activate because isn't this already... Yeah, this is called Thunar D here. So if everything works now, that should uh, just activate that instance of Thuner. And it did. You can try it again, just because it feels so good. Let's see what happens now. But because now we, I, I think we will get unexpected behavior here now when we do uh, uh, B instead. It should now create a new window and it probably will, but it's not sure that it, no, I don't think it did. It doesn't rename the right window here. You can see here, this window is not renamed. It's called Thunar, is the class name. But this that was called Thunar D before is now called, the, it renamed the wrong window. And this is because uh, rename here, that, that also uh, takes uh, regular expressions to, to uh, uh, match the window. And that means that Thunar D actually matches Thunar here. So what we need to do is to, to fix this with uh, a regular expression to make it only match uh, a, a, a window with a class name Thunar. No more, no less. Save, close, everyone, go. Ah, and it also for some reason moved this window here. I don't know why it did so, but now if we do Thunar CD, it should create, yes, here. And we can see here, I have to fix this so it auto updates, but whatever. Thunar D, it's here. Now if we do Thunar B, there, it put it in our B container, just as we wanted. And now we have two windows. Uh, now we only need to, to add uh, two different uh, uh, hotkeys so we can uh, manage these with key combinations instead of using the terminal. And that's no more difficult than adding one more command here. I like to, to add it like this. So super shift and E 
will execute Thuner FM, but this time uh, we, we, we also add the C and the B, and we could add C and D here also just to make it clear. So now if I reload, if I press Super uh, E, it uh, focuses our D container Thuner, uh, Super Shift E. Now our B container. It, it, it's hard to see which I have focus now since I have the poly bar, but you can see. Okay, okay, we we, we stopped the video there. Uh, next uh, next video in the series, we, we, we kind of uh, let's get dirty and, and they customize the user interface here a bit. I, I'm not really 100% sure where, where we go from here, but now we have a good foundation to dirt tack on. Thank you for watching everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.